In the dynamic and ever-evolving landscape of the hip-hop industry, authenticity and talent have always been the two mandatory criteria for a loyal following. But what happens when your following is planted because nobody knows anything about you or likes what you do, essentially labeling you an industry plan? Bobby Althoff is a 26-year-old American TikToker turned podcaster who blew up during the COVID-19 pandemic from sharing pregnancy updates about her unborn baby that she later named Concrete. Bobby is known for a very awkward and disarming interview style, and in fact, her soft-spoken and quirky interview style is a carbon copy replica of Amelia de Moldenberg, the host of Chicken Shop Date, a UK miniature hip-hop podcast. On the show, Amelia would invite big UK artists such as Dave, Fredo, and Central C, and the likes of many other artists for a short conversation. Now, Amelia has built this platform over the last 10 years, compared to Bobby, who hasn't even had this platform for over three months. This isn't a typical case of an industry plan, as industry plans in hip-hop are usually the artists, not podcasters. An industry plan is an artist who has a rather quick rise to fame with no true backstory behind them, and the artist is usually heavily funded by record labels, which uses marketing strategies to make it look like their growth and progression as an artist is real and authentic. But in the grand scheme of things, they paved the way to the top and have no real fans. Bobby Althoff falls exactly into this category. She has gotten interviews with Drake, which has since then been deleted, Lil Yachty, Mark Cuban, and Tyga. Bobby went from interviews with actors like Rick Glassman, who was in a few NBC sitcoms, to Funny Marco, Drake, and billionaire Mark Cuban, then Tyga. Now, we all know Drake rarely does any interviews, and over the course of last year, he's been getting held back for doing interviews outside of the hip-hop culture, essentially on white platforms. Prior to this, Bobby recalled making a TikTok video saying she would offer $300 to anyone who could connect with celebrities and when this didn't work conveniently, enough she noticed that Drake liked one of her videos and she threw a Hail Mary. I decided to just go for it and shoot my shot. I DM Drake and asked if he wanted to be on my podcast and he said yes. He sent me his touring schedule and I knew that I needed to make it happen fast so my friend and I flew to Memphis two days after the original DM was sent to record the episode. Drake is by far one of the most popular celebrities ever with over 100 million followers on Instagram in which he most likely receives at least 10,000 DMs a day from fans, verified people, people from all walks of life. So what makes you think that he would respond to you unless they had any prior relations which was evidently made clear when she spoke earlier that they didn't? The really good podcast is a sham. To the audience watching, it doesn't even feel right. She stole the dry humor from Funny Marco and Amelia de Moldenberg and then tried to produce the same thing. After Drake appeared on the podcast, his co-sign put her on the map. We've all heard about the Drake Stimmy, the stimulus package where after you collab with Drake on a song, your career skyrockets. We've seen this with Rock Boy JB, Isla McCona at the time, as well as Party Next Door, who's actually still signed to Drake. Now, the effect is still the same even if you're a podcaster, which is technically a bigger audience space. Drake and Lil Yachty are surprisingly really good friends. So once Drake appeared on the podcast, Yachty followed after and had his own interview. Now, during this interview... It felt more like a job interview than an actual conversation. While during the podcast, Bobby started pointing out different things in Yachty's Atlanta mansion, such as his life-size crayons in the back, his life-size Batman sculpture, and his teeth, which was $90,000 veneers he spent a whole lot of money on. Yachty spoke on how he got veneers and said, I want a young thug's dentist. He had the best veneers I'd ever seen. To which he responded, who was that? And which Yachty had the most dramatic pause ever. Let's take a second to talk about you. What are you into? He said. This woman is supposedly immersing herself in hip-hop culture, America's biggest genre and most lucrative genre, and doesn't know Young Thug aka King Slime up in that cage. Now, for her to be in the hip-hop space because that's what she's into now, she has Tyga, Drake, Lil Yachty, that is hip-hop. And then lead towards this audience and not even know who Young Thug is, makes me view her as a plant even more. Young Thug is one of the biggest hip-hop artists, especially now, bigger than ever, with him being locked up down in Atlanta for the state of Georgia RICO trial. Now, podcasters aren't like artists who sign record deals and they sign to agencies. It's not quite clear why the interview with Drake had been shelved. However, what we do know is it has something to do with brand image. Now, the rarity of rappers jumping on platforms outside of the Breakfast Club drink champs Joe Budden realm is very high. And it's clear he didn't see it as a positive future because the interview got taken down. Bobby addressed the interview, showed a conversation with Dave Portnoy, the owner of Barstool Sports, which hosts other podcasts such as Million Dollars with the Game and Call Her Daddy prior to this. I did not want to do this podcast in the first place, and now so much negativity is coming from me. I'm going to leave it alone after this, but this is the uncensored DM between Dave and I, which basically just shows some more DMs of someone saying that like, oh, it seemed like you hooked up with Drake 
and he got divorced from it. Just basically based off clips that they shown throughout the interview. How does you do an interview with Drake? A person nearly impossible to book. Now, after doing some research and digging a little bit deeper into her social media, I discovered that Bobby signed to WME, William Morris Entertainment, which is an entertainment booking agency. Through her agent, which she has spoken about in multiple interviews, she books artists who are featured on his website, and if not, still in the same realm. So this narrative that she just DM Drake on IG and a couple days later they got an interview is complete bogus. Just imagine someone like Drake who gets 10,000 plus Instagram DMs a day from verified people picking and choosing to do an interview with her. Right. Interesting enough, I've seen comments saying that she's not even a good interviewer. She just has guests that are good on camera. Now, does Bobby have a large audience of TikTok? Yes. But are these people in the hip hop and black culture space? No. Remember, industry plans don't always mean an artist who became super viral in a short time with no real come up. It also means people who may have gained some traction and success in another area of media, completely shipping their typical career into another space and excelling with literally no problems. Her connection to her agency and management is the only reason why her podcast has skyrocketed since the pilot episode. After other artists seen Drake and Lil Yachty, they just hopped on the bandwagon. We've even seen artists like Offset let someone film a music video with Bobby in it, which looked super random. Industry plants all happen to have the same byproduct to be a distraction. We've seen in Lil Nas X and the Satanic Rituals that he portrays as well as him cosplaying to be a homosexual male, when in reality, before the fame revealed that he had interest in women. The growth of the industry plant is everything but organic, with the use of social media, music going viral on TikTok, and around the clock media coverages, it makes a scripted project look like an overnight success. One of the most telling signs of industry plan is the absence of a true fan base built over time. Although Bobby has a fan base, which is a bunch of moms, young people watching a pregnancy journey, the podcast audience is a totally different space that didn't grow organically and was solely based off her corporate connections. 